Hola mis amores, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being here. If you're in amor, thank you so much for always coming back. If you're here for the first time, please click the subscribe button and become part of the Amores family. All right, mis amores, so today we are going into another history lesson. And this time we are going uh, to look at the role that Swapo played in the liberation struggle. I once did a video on the role the churches played, but now let's see what exactly did Swapo do to bring the you know the liberty and the independence of namibia i'm going to give you quick um uh, history of you know the name change from opc to Swapo. all right it was first known as the ovambo people's congress that was founded in 1957 by students in cape town one of them was andiba toibo then in 1958 they renamed the name to ovambo people's organization but only on the 19th of april 1960 that's when they changed it to southwest africa people's organization and the president of the organization or the party was sam nuyoma They changed the name because they wanted to have uh, greater credibility in the eyes of international organizations because they had to show that this political party catered to everybody. So international organizations such as the OAU and the United Nations. So they wanted to have greater credibility in their eyes. Another reason is that OPO or OPC on the OPC that O stand, stood for Ovambo so it made people think that the organization was only for the Oshuambo speaking people and they wanted to change that narrative they wanted to make sure the party catered to everybody so hence changing the name to Swapo the SWA standing for Southwest Africa because at the time Namibia was called Southwest Africa first of all it wanted to fight South Africa that's it they wanted to fight against the injustices of the South Africans you know the authorities so they were fighting against it and another reason why it was changed is because it wanted to fight for the rights of black Namibians we are aware that apartheid was introduced in 48 and with it came so many laws and Namibians black Namibians to be specific did not like the laws hence changing the name from um, OPC OPO to SWAPO and SWAPO fighting for the right of Namibians. There were other movements that joined in Swapo that helped them to fight, you know, and those movements were Swanu, Kanu, Nudo, and Damara Tribal Council. Now, before I get into the role of Swapo itself, I want to focus a little bit on Sam Nyoma, who was the president of Swapo at the time, and what exactly did he do? Because times you hear people say oh sam nyoma didn't do anything he wasn't even fighting wasn't even in the country so how can you say that he fought for the liberation and the independence of this country if he was not fighting so today i'm going to tell you what exactly was sam nyoma doing when he was outside namibia Backtrack a little bit. 1959, the Vinduk massacre happened. Now, some of the people, as I've explained in the Vinduk massacre uh, video, I said people went to exile. And one of the people or one of those people that had gone to exile was Sam Nyoma. He left Namibia in 1960, so he went into exile in countries such as Zambia, Tanzania, even as far as the United States of America. And in 1966, he tried to come back, but he was deported. And not only that, he lost his job because he was a railway worker. He lost his job. He was blacklisted. Nobody could give him a job anywhere. So he went out and he de decided to dedicate his time to Swapo as an organization. So this is what he was doing while he was outside Namibia. First of all, he was raising funds for Swapo. Because Namibians in here, the Swapo people that were going to start up the, 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 the wing movement or the wing, the, the army wing needed money. So he was raising money for Swapo while he was outside. He was also making Swapo known and he was making uh, the international world aware of what was happening in Namibia. Because we know during apartheid, you know, it was very limited information could leave the country. So he was outside Namibia and he was getting this information known. Another thing is that he was raising funds to develop and to establish Swapo offices all over the world. This Offices were established, but they needed to be run. Somebody had to run them, and money was needed to keep them going. He was also raising money through Eastern countries. So all these countries were bringing in money, and so he was fighting and learning, you know, and bringing that information back to Namibia. So that is the role that Sam Nyoma was playing while he was outside the country all those years. What led to the armed struggle? Why did Swapo decide, you know what, 
enough it's time to take up this fighting so in 1959 again i go back to vinduk massacre that was just the turning point of swapo what transpired all those people dying meant that trouble was coming our way so in 1962 swapo decided that they were going to take up arms against south africa so countries such as cuba russia and a german democrat came on board and gave military training and weapons to namibians so a lot of namibian men and women first just being men and later joined by women left Namibia to Tanzania and Zambia. They were receiving a training in Zambia and Tanzania. So from 1962, they said enough is enough. We are going to take up arms against South Africa. Number one, they realized, you know what? Peaceful talks, marches, demonstrations, those things are not helping us in any way. We have been doing that since 1948, since South Africa took over, and we have not seen any change. So we are tired of this. You know, it's, it's time to take our guns and fight, and let's see what is going to transpire. Another reason why they decided to take up arms is because they had the support of Namibians. Namibians who had their back. Namibians said, you know what? Yes, not all of us agree with what you want to do by fighting, but we are also not going to condemn you. And there were many Namibians, as I've said, even other movements joined SOPO, and they said we are going to help you fight. So you have our support. If you need soldiers, we are here. Guerrilla fighters, we are going to be here. So as I've said, in 1962, they launched a guerrilla um, wing or uh, a wing, an army wing for SOPO, and this wing was known as the People's Liberation Army of Namibia or in short it was known as PLAN and it was only given that name in 1973 but going again uh, back to the reasons for the for the liberation for the war of liberation is because um, incidents such as the Middle Massacre as well as the Sharp Film Massacre of 21st March 1960 showed that South Africa was actually capable of using violence so if they could kill people in south africa and if, if they could kill people in the vinduk massacre what more are we expecting so we better get ourselves ready because before you know it we are gonna have a war in our hands or in a war in our sight and that's exactly what happened look at the Kasinga massacre that happened years later in 1978 so at least they were prepared but the only problem was that Kasinga was not a military camp and those in Kasinga could not defend themselves so that's the reason why they decided enough with the peaceful talks enough with begging the South Africans it's time that we take up our guns and we fight these people I also just want to add that another reason was the International Court of Justice decision of 1966. We know that Liberia and South Af um, sorry Liberia and Ethiopia took South Africa to ICJ, but um, the United Nations rejected you know that appeal. So it made Namibians see that the United Nations has failed us. So we can't depend on them. Better we depend on ourselves. The 26th of August 1966 was that day, you know, um, the South African Defence Force attacked the Swapo military camp in Omsati region, killing two guerrilla fighters and capturing 27 people. Now, those 27 people were sent to prison in South Africa, and some of them were Andy Batoiwe, Atoiwe, Eliezer Tohadeleni, Nathanael Mahwili, just to mention a few. So they were sent to prison in South Africa. And, you know, I'm going to do a video on the trial of Andiba Toibo, Toibo because from this trial, Andiba Toibo was, Toibo was found guilty and had to serve 20 years in prison, but only served 17. He was released in 1984, went to exile in, in Zambia and only returned in 1989 for the elections. But the 26th of August was the beginning. It marked the beginning of a civil war in Namibia between South Africa and Namibia. And today, the 26th of August, is commemorated as Heroes Day and is a public holiday right here in Namibia. Swapo had camps, you know, in different African countries that were for the civilians or for the fighters. So let's talk about those camps. Starting off first in 1972, their very first camp was established in Lusaka. This was more of an educational and a health facility and it was in Zambia. So that was their first camp. The second camp was the Nyango camp, which was established in 1975, September to be exact, in Zambia as well. And then we had uh, camps that were established in uh, Angola. We know that in 1975, Angola received its independence from Portugal, and so they opened their borders to Namibians. 
some of the camps were the Kasinga camp as well as the Njamba camp being found, you know, founded in 1975 in Wila and uh, Kwanzaa. And these camps were mostly for civilians. They acted as educational and health facilities. That's why I said in the video of the Kasinga massacre that people that were killed, they were not soldiers. They were actually civilians that were taking asylum in Angola. Other places that had, you know, that accommodated Swapo were countries such as, as Congo. In 1986, the Namibia Secondary Technical School was opened in Congo. And then after the Kasinga massacre, the Hendrik Vetboy School was opened in Cuba. And another school um, that was opened in 1978. And in 1981, Jose Akutako was also opened in Cuba. So all those were schools that were opened in Cuba. The civil war between Namibia and Swapo lasted for 20 years. They were fighting each other in all different ways. We have spoken about different massacres. And so they were fighting, you know, Swapo was helping the contract workers. Swapo was helping uh, Namibians with education. So this war lasted for 20 years. So this was the role that Swapo played in the liberation struggle of Namibia. There were other movements and other political parties, but Swapo was the main one because it was the only one that was internationally, internationally recognized as the movement or the political party of the Namibian people. Well, Mr. Morris, thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. But before I let you go, please give this video a thumbs up, comment in the comment section because it takes me time to do my research on this. Yes, I know I have the content already, but I always have to go to other sources just to verify my information. So please, it just takes a second for you to click like and for you to comment something. And again, please subscribe to this channel. Share the link with someone who loves history or somebody that is studying history or just somebody, you know what, I have nothing to do. Let me watch a history video on Namibian history. Thank you so much, Mr. Morris, for watching and I'll see you next time. Adios, Mr. Morris.